second because they added new buttons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all. welcome to Odin's Alchemy. Today we have the great pleasure of welcoming back my friend and fellow homesteader, Owen Benjamin. We've had both had just huge years and it's well past time for us to get together and uh, talk about it. How you doing, Owen? I'm good, man. It's good to be back. I'm pumped. Fantastic. That, that's excellent. Yeah, you've, you've had so much going on the, la the last year, brother. I've been keeping an eye and like I've been like myself. I can hardly uh, hardly uh, keep straight the way it's been going at it uh, the last year. Um, it's getting I nutty, right? Like, it's like it's hilarious. Things are getting wild. Oh like, we're man, getting, we're the 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 drain is is getting like rapid. The whirlpool. I want to. Are we on Rockfin right now? Let me make sure. It. I I put it in the thing, but Rockfin's kind of sketchy. Let me make sure we're on Rockfin right now. I want to shout out Rockfin. Rockfin was uh the uh, the only time I've ever been replatformed was uh Martin from Rockfin after uh eight months of thought put me back on and i just i just think that's super cool that he did that so i just uh i always want to give credit where credit's due and that was a uh, because it was stupid that he kicked me off and we cut we stayed friends <laughs> we stayed friends and i think slowly he saw that because i it was like the rockfin deplatforming was like one of the ones after i got my feet on the ground again and got my own social media and my own streaming and all that stuff. So I didn't feel like I was being attacked. I, I was like more calm and I didn't just freak out. And um, I think because of that, I left the door open for him to like right. see that it was wrong, you know, that it was like I was doing comedy. I was doing pretty cutting edge, good comedy. And so then he was like, okay, I'm going to put you back on. And I just think that's awesome. He did that. And I just want to shout out Rockfin. That, no, that's super awesome that he did. Also, I got to say, you laid out really good points, and I didn't ever talk to you about this because um, I just don't talk about drama behind the scenes of people and stuff. I'm just, just not that kind of uh, – uh... oh, my. What's up? Yeah, that, that – that, um, a friend of mine just said that another friend of mine – I don't see where it is, but – yeah, that archaics, that archaics dude, fellas, he, he's a legit rapist. And yeah, I mean, I'm old school. There, there's things you do not forgive. There, you do not forgive. Yeah, same here. I, I'm the same um, way. Like great. people kept trying to talk about that guy. They're like, you, you're, you're gonna love his gravy. I'm like, he's a convicted sex offender. Like, dude, what I, world I are you living in, man? Yeah. I'm like, that's that dude should be killed. Like, that's not something yeah. that you're like. Oh, but he has really good simulation theory gravy. I'm like, aren't we truthers? Like, aren't we the guys trying to reveal, like, you know, child abuse and what's really going on behind the scenes? And so we're going to start listening to a guy who literally fucking raped a girl? Like, no. Yeah, and I mean, had her tied up the whole night, oh. got caught. He apparently must have felt guilty at the end and was taking her to the hospital and got caught. Still had her all tied up and everything. Like I looked it up. Uh it has his picture, the whole nine. I like it it's up it's too, great yeah. Legit. like yeah, I'm certainly not believing nothing like that on just uh, uh, off base, but then uh alert and error occurred. I keep not being able to pull up Rockfin. We I'm not, I'm just not gonna see you for a second. I'm gonna try it on my computer. I wonder if my phone's being glitchy or Rockfin's being glitchy. Um, but yeah, it, you know, I understand. He, the guy's like the biggest growing channel right now, like has been for, for a bit. And he th says things people like or whatever, but you, you can't just take things from anybody. And this is how you end up with gurus, you know, gurus, every guru uh, throughout history has said things that, you know, you can quote and it's a, it's a good thing in and of itself. And then you find out the dude's diddling 12 year olds. Like, <laughs> yeah yeah and dude a lot of people don't get it that a lot of people that are feeding up poison gravy it's like they they, they give you good stuff too it's not just yeah. all bad that's that's the issue i have with paul from the bible like i just had this whole week where i was like talking shit about um the quote-unquote apostle paul and the christian got really mad at me about that even though it was like 
I, I, I'd see a lot of his writings are really good and a lot of them are really bad. And I'm like, he was a professional murderer of Christians. Like no right. problem there. Like you have no problem with that. Like he rounded them up and murdered them. And then he made a claim that he saw Jesus when no one else was around. And then he started changing Jesus's teachings. But see the thing that, that why I think a lot of people gravitate to Paul so much is because he basically is like, he's kind of created the modern Judeo Christian. Like if you eat a cracker and pay the money, you're going to heaven bullshit, you know? And so people get right. so mad when you like point out that. And so like this archaics guy, he's probably saying a lot of shit that people want to, he's saying some good gravy where it's like, wow, yeah. that's really, that's really powerful stuff. But then what everyone wants to hear, like, Oh, there's going to be, uh, you know, this coming division of people and a golden age is coming, but only for you small group. And you're all, and I'm like, you raped the fucking girl, man. Like you took a girl's body without her permission. 100%. You know? And that's fucking bad. It's like I get called a shill and I'm banned from everything and all this because of like my criticism of a certain tribe of people or that I worked in Hollywood. It's like, this dude is a convicted sex offender, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to talk shit. I mean, much love to the guy. It's not like I hold hatred to him or resentment. I'm just like, I don't get why truthers that spent two years, yeah. like chasing Q, like the, all these truthers are spending like two years chasing Q into the sewers. Like, Oh, we're going to get all the, we're going to get all these rapists dude. and it's like, dude, this guy's are truth being truthers. There's like this weird thing where it's like, you're just a Republican. You are not a truther. You're just right. a Republican. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm out of the binary, dude. It's two wings of the same bird to a degree that I never even imagined. It's such a yeah. stupid trick. It's such a, it's like such a child's parlor trick, you know? Like I may vote for Kanye West, but other than that, there's no way I'm ever voting again. <laughs> right, right. Like, I heard that you. Florida. I heard that you've been talking to him. Somebody said to that to me that you've been talking to him. I did. I talk to Ye every day. <laughs> what? I swear to God, that's dude. awesome, dude. He's that's he's insane. great. He's a fucking great guy. Nice. He really is. Dude, he, dude, he sent me this jacket. Check this out. It's like a big. Yeah, look at this. It says yay 24. Hang on. <laughs> that is awesome. Dude, he's like, uh, because I told him, I go, bro, like, uh, you're an A-list celebrity, and a lot of truthers think this is all scripted, like one of these scripted events. He goes, he goes, I can't, I'll never forget what he said. He goes, bro, who's scripting it then? Like, God? <laughs> like, he's, right. he, it's all actually happening. I mean, for better or for worse, I'm not saying the guy is like an idol or like a savior or anything like that. I mean, he's got a lot of his own problems. He's like hyper artistic, you know, uh, doesn't think ahead with certain stuff, like just runs and guy. Like, I'm not, you know, uh, saying to like just treat him like like he's like a super special guy, but it's authentic. Dude, it's like these truthers that keep analyzing every that everything's fake. I'm like, no, dude, this dude will have like an idea and do it. And then the media will run with it for like a month he just like gets people to react and then they just react it's fucking right. hilarious but and i mean he's got he's got enough media attention to where any decision like that where a lot of people the bad decisions actually don't show up um but then the good decisions are the ones that hit and catch fire you know and yeah. do good where he he's got the public spotlight all the time and i think rockfin's down bro like I can't pull it up on my computer nor my phone. Oh, really? Interesting. Too much. Yeah, later. it's I. Yeah, Derek can Jared will put it up there later, but that's just I cool. wanted to have it live, but uh, yeah, Jared will snatch it or whatever and and uh, put it up. Let me. Yeah, and I know we're on YouTube because I can see comments. Awesome. Um, great. But yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and that simulation theory is very interesting. Like I love El Emily Moyer. She's fantastic. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't cool. think she does, that. She does uh, I used to, I, I dude, It's cool. You brought her up. Cause I, I fucking have it. Cause I don't have a YouTube account. So I have to like actively search for everybody I watch. And I haven't searched that. The 
Susquehanna Alchemy? Is that who she, she well, does? Michael Wan. That's yeah, Michael Wan. But doesn't Michael do it with Emily? Is aren't they like a team? He does. Yeah, they're friends. Yeah, cool. absolutely. I thought that was really interesting shit. I like their dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Emily's such a cool chick. We I've actually yeah. uh, got to hang out with her in person and everything, and just a really really cool chick. And like I said, you were talking to me. Uh, we were good. We started recording and then decided to just switch up to live. And uh, uh, we Owen was talking to me about that. There's Odin's Bay up by his place, and it's super interesting timing that uh, he's talking to me about that because Christy and I are kind of at this weird, weird spot where we're either gonna expand and get more land here, or we're gonna get move off of this land and go somewhere more uh where the government's not so crazy because i we absolutely love you, guys there. you know because we're hoping it'll stop now uh because they've driven out all the the mom and pop pop growers like they raided like for the last th since we've lived here the first year it was all right the second year it was like somebody kicked an anthill the third year, it was like the ants came back and brought all their friends and all their relatives and everything else. And uh, they raided like three or four times this year. Um, and and it, it doesn't affect me normally. But like the first time they raided, they come walking over our property. My dogs are out and we watch for it now when they're doing it. And my grandkids were playing in the backyard. And all that takes is one of my dogs charging them. And yeah. all of a sudden... There's some real problems today now, you know, yeah. uh, it, like, so I, it, it's just, it's one of those things where it's, ex, it feels extremely invasive. Uh, even if the County in and of itself, like wrote off all, all the abatements on my property and was really nice when I called them and I'm like, what do I got you got to, what do I got to do to get you guys to leave me alone besides not grow pot? Cause you keep bothering me for growing pot and I'm not like, and then uh, he's like, Okay. Okay. I get it. You know, and they, and they legitimately like their helicopters have mostly flown around the perimeter of my property and stayed off my property. And, and cause I told them, I'm like, your helicopters run my animals. They're flying way too low, you know, things like that. And they, they, yeah. they did. They, and they took away those fines they gave you, huh? Yep. They took away the fines that were, see, they don't give them to the person anymore. They attach it to the property in and of itself. So there's abatements. You can you buy these properties and you're like, why is this property so stupid cheap? It's because there's abatements attached to it because there was a pot grow on it at one point in time. And now there's like a hundred thousand dollar or a two hundred thousand dollar fine on the property. And the government's just going to take it back, you know, because they then they attach that into your taxes, which after seven years, if you don't pay or whatever, they just take the property. Um, so uh, but once I came here. And I let the county guy come in, which is not my normal way. But I'm like, hey, yeah. <laughs> what do we got to do here? And so he said, you know, hey, let me come over and see what you got going on. He came over. He didn't even like poke around inside any of my buildings or nothing. He was really respectful about all of it. He's like, oh, man, you, you know, I'm sorry. You know, we can't, you know, we don't know. He's like, this is what we want to see. And I. Uh, uh, was real nice about it. And then they wrote off my, uh, wrote the debts off of my thing. They're like, we want homesteaders here doing what you're doing. So we're helping yeah. encourage it. That's great. Yeah. Man. So, it, yeah. Cause you so, have a good but, ladder there too, which is awesome. I mean, this area is pretty epic. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty uh, heathen friendly, you know, it's like uh, Odin's Bay. And then like, you have like these epic, copper mountains these mountains is filled with copper and like deep fresh water and just fucking you know it, it elk run on my property it's just like it's pretty epic it's just Can pretty you imagine cool. the charge running through that mountain oh yeah totally no because i was just talking to curtis stone the other day about how uh like using copper tools with soil might like charge up the soil like there's something really magical about copper you know we're just starting to get into it yeah, it's like iron tools versus copper tools, like how copper has this like, you know, resonance about it. It's why when white people take meth, they want to get all the copper out of abandoned houses and shit. <laughs> They're just trying, like they just get drawn. It's like 
how the bees get drawn to bikes when they smoke, you know, a certain rock. It's like the W's get get drawn to like an abandoned house just filled with copper piping. We're like, I need yes. the copper. Like there is something yes. absolutely magical about copper. The, absolutely. Um, in my entire, because uh, I, I just spoke at Flattoberfest uh, this last year. Nice. And I have this, uh, this uh, cosmology uh, I've been putting together. And part of it, a big part of it, and what actually initially uh, kicked it off was that the iron, you have an iron side and a copper side to your blood. That's your red, you know, your red blood's your iron side because your iron is drawing in oxygen. Well, it's also pushing out hydrogen. And then the copper side of your blood is drawing in hydrogen, but pushing out oxygen. And these are the two energetic pieces that are doing these two things that literally makes your life happen and keeps you going. And uh, this is when you look at the stars, that's Mars and Venus. That's men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. The masculine side, your iron side, your, you know, your uh, destructive side, the, the oxygen does an oxygenation, which is a destruction. And then the hydrogens, the feminine side, which is your Venus side. And that that makes it so things come back together that create the fusion. And so uh, it was this whole this this whole thing I've been working on. It's it was was pretty cool. But the two pieces of that are specifically iron and copper. Interesting. Is that why you see because you're the only guy I've ever heard say the moon is masculine. Is it because the moonlight is the destroyer? Because the the moon the moon's degradatory. That's your masculine side. The, the and so and it needs to be, uh, but it so that way uh, it can break apart, and that little particles of it actually go over and inseminate the feminine side, and then there's this like pregnancy that happens where the electron because the electron takes a, a hard path, and then the uh, the ion side which I understand there's a whole thing that uh, we could get into and I'll do a video on that later with all that talking about, it. but the ion side goes on over and meets it. So there's like this gestation period, but then the usable energy is produced from that. So I kind of understand where the people thought the sun was the masculine side. Cause that's the push, but it's the yeah. push of the baby that the two put together, you know? Um, and yeah, that's why that's that degradatory, destructive, masculine. Yeah, because what about the? Because I used to do a bit about how the moon was uh, feminine because of like La Luna, like the feminine, and then like the twenty-eight day cycle, like the like the egg. But you actually, like, you actually got me to think like maybe that wasn't accurate because you know you think of like the the sun is like the power source, like the man, like ah, and then the woman is like the grounder, like the grounding rod. But like, yeah, it's like the moonlight does break down shit, which is what men do. And then the, the womb is what infuses energy. So it's it's interesting. It, I, I can see your point now. Well, and you look at the way the two affect us. So there's two things that make me fucking <clears throat> bust out the war hammer. My yeah. wife in the morning sun. Those are the two things that make that happen. The, and then the moon on the flip side, that's when women, the, the, that makes them cycle, that makes them get freaky, you know? So physiologically, this is affecting us specifically the way it should. Uh, The morning sun. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cause like the moon, you know, it's like the wolves are howling at it and it gets you acting a little crazy. So I was always thinking that was feminine. But what if that was more like the war call? Like, Aroo! you know, versus like, yep. sexual. yeah, it's interesting, dude. Yeah, I can see that. And then and then you start looking at like before. Oh, dude, bro. There's this whole like early late 1800s, early 1900s thing theory I've been working on for a number of years where there was just a twisting. So I, you know, because I'm a heathen, I dig into the, they call it the neo-pagan movement. And I've been tearing that apart. And I'm finding where that's where they made a lot of these switches from masculine to the feminine and masculine got flip-flop. Okay. So like 
before that, like the First Nation tribes, Native Americans, if a woman wants to ensure pregnancy, she goes outside in a full moon and exposes her genital, genitals to it and pulls wow. in that energy. And that's like, right. Um, you look at origin, the original Egyptian story where uh, you had Isis, which is the feminine sun, and Osiris, which is the masculine moon. And they've, con they've convoluted that into a whole bunch of things, but specifically Osiris breaks apart into 14 pieces and then reassembles into 14 pieces, 14 pieces reassemble into a whole, except for his penis, which she keeps to impregnate herself over and over again. Like the story I tell, like, and you look at 14, let's see, is that you know, waxing and waning moon? And, yeah. and because, yeah. right. So, because pe nobody actually goes back and reads source material anymore. They read somebody else's opinion of something. Um, you know, even in the heathen world, they'll read Edred Thorson's like Edred Thorson. He's the foremost expert on, on everything. Heathen. The guy's not even a heathen. He's a Satanist. He's like the, he's like the purple dragon dick sucker of the church of set or some such thing. Right. right. And, uh, right. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's an Anton LaVey Satanist. Like, uh, so the guy's in his actual name's uh, Stephen Flowers. Like, so so everybody just goes off of somebody else's opinion. Well, I know how to read. I'm pretty good at it. I, I was able to read uh, college level when I was in second grade. I can read these source materials. They've been translated. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's funny how every group has that satanic element that always tries to weasel in like every group it's so funny yeah. i want to write a book about it called the demon with a thousand faces because like once you pin down one group you realize how it actually works where it's like there isn't just one group doing all the evil because there is a group that i thought was doing all the evil kind of you know i it starts with a j and uh and it, it isn't, though. It's like they, they, they just keep doing that. They do it with Christianity. Now they did it with science, you know, where they're like, they find whatever has uh, virtue and goodness and like, uh, you know, power that comes from truth. And then they weasel in, they brand themselves that, and then they start shifting it into Satanism. It's so fascinating, like, because now the priest with the white lab coat, the scientist, is doing uh, like objectively doing evil shit. And so it's like, but the scientific method is so valid, but yet they did. And it's interesting to see that, that he then faces the same thing where you have like these like little weasels that, that come in and start trying to like, they pace it. It's like what Trump did. It's like they pace the truthers, they pace them. They make them think that like you're one of them. And then they start pulling you off a cliff. You know, it's, it's yeah. fascinating. Because Christianity has yep. that so bad, man. It's like, because I always considered myself Christian, but a lot of Christians have been telling me for so long that I'm not a Christian. They're like, you don't believe in the Trinity as we just, like, you don't worship Jesus God. You don't, like, you make fun of Paul. Like, you know, that you celebrate Christian Christmas as a heathen. Because I do. I'm like, I have heathen root. I have pagan roots. So I celebrate Christmas and Easter. Easter is how you teach your children to find eggs and I, I, you know, my family talks about the equinox and the solstice and, you know, we like to yeah. do herbal remedies because my whole thing is I'm like, I'm a heathen adjacent Islamo Christian. And it just to see people's minds just blow, because they say Judeo Christian. What the fuck does that mean? So, so I'm like, so I love God. I follow Christ, but I'm not Christian because Christian at this point means something in my opinion, like fairly satanic. It means like, you know, pay the money, eat the cracker, do as thou wilt is what I'm seeing over and over again. It's like, it's like, yeah. you know, you have like Steven Crowder and all these guys deceptively promoting foreign wars, dressing as women for money, you know, lying about, you know, COVID, making money on masks. And I'm like, is this, is this what, what Christ would want of you? You know? And they're like, and then, and they consider me the one who's not Christian. I'm like, okay, man, maybe, maybe I'm not then. It's fine. Like, I don't, I don't care because it's like, yeah. I, I'm a truth seeker, man. I'm not like, I'm not into like a brand. I feel like it's been branded. It's like a brand. 
where it's like, unless you believe this interpretation of the Bible, is that always say like, who's Jesus praying to? Like, obviously he's connecting to his creator. How can God pray to himself? Isn't that kind of masturbatory? And they literally fucking lose their minds. They're like, you know, how dare you? You're a Satanist. I'm like, no, but it's actually the opposite though. I'm like, you're the one that's objective. Like, Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Who's he talking to? Is he talking? Is he muttering to himself? Is he schizophrenic? Is he like, forgive them, Father? Like, what is like? Obviously, you know, Christ's path is like uh, we can all get closer to the Father, and that's like Odin, the All Father. You know, it's like there's a lot of similarities, and I do think that each group. My my new theory, and then what I will is that each group gets like their connector to God, and it comes in a variety of ways. And then like the satanic people, like the deceptors will like um, will try and just keep morphing it into their own ability to get power and like rape, you know? Yeah. And you see, the truth is like that dude we we're talking about. He tied up and raped a girl. You know, it's like, how is that a guy that any like like Paul from the Bible hunted down and killed Christians for money from Nero? You know, and everyone's like, oh, who are right. you to not forgive? I'm like. Listen, I'm not judging his soul. I'm not judging these people's redemption or like what their intention are, but I'm not going to listen to them. Like, I'm not going to listen to a murderer, the, a guy that like, unless someone like really owns it, you know? And they're like, you know, like somebody fought in a war and like realized he was deceived or something like that. But like to tie up a woman and to like fuck the woman, that's like. In prison, you can be a murderer. And we can sit to next to each other. I'll sit. We can sit and eat next to each other. Yeah. You can you can be a thief. Now, those are two things that you actually deserve to be in prison for. There's so many things that people don't deserve to be in prison for. Yeah. But <clears throat> a, a rapist, a child molester, you don't deserve to be in prison either. You deserve to be on a gallows. Like, oh, I, yeah. I don't even know what to say. Like. As a heathen, we kicked those people out of society and they were no longer a person. Like anybody could steal their stuff. There was no justice for them. They couldn't see, seek rec you know, recourse in, in, a, in a court. You were banned from society. Nobody accepts you. Like yeah. there's something wrong with you, dude. You know? Yeah, that's so true. It's like to be aroused by non-consent there's no, there's no like, cause I used to be a, like a bit of a, a sexual, uh, uh, hedonist, you know, like I was, uh, really into just banging, you know, but it was always because they wanted me. Like that was actually the addiction. It might've yeah. been a self-esteem issue or something, but I'm like, like, I really like seeing desire in a woman's eyes, you know, and like a new one. It, I don't know. It's just like, that was like, and it's not good. I'm not like justifying that, but that was what I was super into. To see fear and like, like if fear in a woman's eyes turns you on, like you got to die. You know, it's not even yeah. like, oh, so you don't like a simulation theory. I'm like, he shouldn't be breathing air, you know, because they'll, because then if they do it again, it's on you. And it's like, mm -hmm. and there's something so fucking twisted about rape. You know, it's one thing if it's like 24 and 17 and they end up marrying or like, he said, she said, because there was alcohol involved and, you know, but like rape, like you fucking you tie tied up her up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, you're, you're not giving advice to people on the fucking simulation theory. No. Like you're lucky you don't I have don't, a, I don't care what you got to say. What's that? Yeah. I don't care what you fucking got to say, bro. I don't give a shit if you got the cure to cancer and my mom's got cancer. Fuck off. Yeah. And yeah, it's the same you know? with murder. It's like, it's one thing of like. You know, you get real pissed. Like someone wrongs you bad. You get real angry. You kill them. Like, yeah, I'll fucking, I'm, I'm cool. Like, I mean, don't get me yeah. wrong. That's like a problem, but it's not like, I'm not like you're evil. I'm like, dude, I'm listening. People freak out. But like rounding up families that follow Christ and murdering them, like what Paul did. That's another thing. I'm like, dude, we're not talking about someone that killed your dog and started poking your chest. And you fucking hit him in the throat and he chokes it. Like, I'm not judging that the same way. I'm like, yeah, dude, people get mad or like somebody, you know, rapes your daughter and you fucking kill him. Like, great, you know, but 
But to like round up and persecute and execute people for their religion, like that's yeah. so bad, you know? And that's what yeah. Paul from, from like, like Paul, the Saint Paul, I, and he was four foot six. You know, the guy was four foot fucking six. He made Rogan look tall. And he had like a big nose. And he was this little fucking murderer. And I'm just like, how? Listen, I'm not. Wow. I'm not saying if he's in heaven or hell or how God judges or anything. Like, I'm literally not saying that. But like, dude, I'm not taking one theological piece of advice from a guy that fucking is like, hey, Roman Emperor, these people follow Christ. Feed them to lions. Like, that's so dark. You know? Right. Right. I, I've I've read. Uh, things that talk about where they think Paul possibly was uh, in addition that they put in, was it that the council yeah. of Nicaea when they were trying yeah. to twist things. But yeah. I, I did a, I did a personal rabbit hole that I just kind of fell into it. It wasn't even of really of interest and I just kind of fell into it. And it was actually from the flat earth perspective, um, which is kind of funny. Right. But uh, so I found this. Uh, okay. Yeah, Rockfin's working again, and we are nice. not on it. Hey, Rockfin. Um, uh, so I will go over and make sure we get that going. Hold on one second. So I went on this personal dive and uh, on it. Well, I found this 1560 Geneva Bible, which it turns out, despite what uh, Google and them try to feed you, was actually the first uh, English translated Bible. And in this, uh, the vision of Ezekiel, the earth is flat. Uh, yeah. There's a firmament and uh, God sits on top of it in this uh, on this throne on top of it. And then there was some other really interesting fe fe uh, things like there was a, a north wind uh, that was called Aqueous and uh, the. Uh, Ezekiel's wheels were under it. There was four Ezekiel's wheels under it. And then four angels uh, holding the uh, four uh, corners of it. So yeah. it was super, uh, super interesting. Um, but then it, okay. So then where it comes in with Christianity is then it turns, turns out that that was, uh, original, so the church didn't like that version and, uh, the church didn't like that version. So they made their own. And then there's the 1599 Geneva Bible. All right. We are on rock then. Um, nice. the 1599, uh, Geneva Bible, which was then church approved. And, uh, uh, which was had some alterations, obviously, you know, why, why did the church change it and make it a different one? And that one's easy to find. Now the 1560 is not, well then, uh, King James came in, in, uh, 1613 and said, you know, no, this is my Bible. Uh, and, uh, made the, uh, King James version, the only Bible and made the other Bibles illegal, which is what caused the original pilgrims to come over the, the United States. And at that point in time, the Geneva Bible that the church had printed started becoming called the Pilgrim's Bible. And uh, that was what our country was founded on. And then this flip over of King J to the King James Bible, who was well known as somebody that believed in uh, 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 royal God given supremacy. What kind of changes he put in his in between that and what I'd really like to see is that 1560. I got to take a few snapshots of it, but uh, it's a six thousand dollar book. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that you know, Jefferson took out Paul, the Jeff Jeffersonian Bible. Thomas Jefferson, who I think is great, he um, he rewrote the Bible too. He was like, he took out the miracles and he took out Paul. He was like, yeah, that Paul's like obviously full of shit. You know, <laughs> right. It's yes, because, I mean, Paul's like contradicts himself like a thousand times and he like he, he supersedes Jesus's teachings and he makes it like, I don't know, you can just see the gravel in it. You can just feel it. You can feel 
you, you can like have this sense of like no accountability. Like there's a, there's a certain satanic, um, you know, internal world that you can always tell where somebody doesn't want boundaries. You know, you can always tell a Satanist mm -hmm. because they're like, there's no boundaries. Like, who are you to say sex with an eight-year-old is bad? Like, we all know that boundaries are necessary. That men and women can be the same or, you know, nations don't exist. Or like, your home is my home. You know, not, not like when it comes to being a good neighbor, but like your choice to do that. But it's kind of like communism is obviously satanic because it's like, you can't have any of your own shit. You know, it's like, no problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, and so you can kind of spot it when it comes where it's like, I don't know. And I can, I can see that with, with, yeah, the King James wore these big poofy pants. Like he seemed like a real fruitcake, that guy. Like he had like bedazzled shit everywhere. He was like fruity, you know, I don't know. I don't know why everyone's like, Oh, King James only. I'm like, Dude, our, our nation was founded by people escaping King James, escaping King George. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he knew, it's, dude, it's Jefferson cool. knew. Jefferson was an agrarian. He was like, he knew what the grabbers were trying to do. They were trying to get their little, their little poofy pants Bible in here because there, there's powerful banking ramifications when you let in that shit. Right. And right. look at where we're at now. And now there's, there's no, it's, it's fractional reserve banking where you don't even need anything now i mean I, thanks to donald J jamarcus trunk now the bank doesn't even need to have any reserves at all like you know when trump right. got into office you needed three percent of the money because a lot of people don't know where money comes from they just invent it like you buy a house for a million dollars you get an eight hundred thousand dollar loan that money didn't exist before you walked into the bank they're like and here's money it's the same with a yeah. credit card. Like when you charge your credit they card, actually use, they right. actually use your down payment as real money to credit themselves for it and fraction that money that they gave you. It's called fractional reserve system. Yeah, exactly. And they fraction the money they gave you and say, look, we have some real money, but it's only the money you gave up. They didn't oh, yeah, give up exactly. nothing. And, and, so, and so like you always think that a bank has all the money in the bank and then they let it out. Until Trump, they needed 3%. So they can lend out 90%. They only need 3%. Now they need 0%. They don't even need any money. They just make money. And so when you're in this world now, the central bank has complete control over what businesses like succeed or fail. But that's why it's all ending soon. Because I think the whole thing's yeah. coming down. Because, because like that power the den of thieves at the top of the pyramid is just eating each other right now they're like dude they're so fucked and they don't have any sense of actual reality i think the grabbers that made the federal reserve were like smart and they actually could like kill people like they were like gangsters you know they were like like real men now their grandkids are like disgusting like weak dumb and incestual you know and you're seeing it all play out. And so that's why it's good to get into homesteading and like get your own tribe. And, you know, because there's going to be a few years where shit gets really wild, I think. What, what do you see coming? I got, I got to meet so many of your tribe on the uh, on the trip that I took to uh, uh, Flat Overfest. That was so awesome. awesome. I got to. Yeah, I got to hang out with James and Najla and uh, all kinds of different bears. I got to mess with media bear a little bit. That was hilarious. Um, They're good people, right? <laughs> yeah. Awesome people. Every awesome. one of them doing, doing actual work. Uh, every one of them invested in a, in an actual productive future, like where they are producing things and being in and of themselves, productive people. And it's just, it, it, it's absolutely beautiful. We wanted to get to Missouri and stuff, but we had so many horrible things happen right before the trip. We ended up having to take a train. And then that ended up turning into a whole trains, planes, and automobile situation where right. like the first train we were on ran over a semi. Like Whoa. we spent hours parked on top of a semi. It was insane. <laughs> I've been left in three years. Like I'm like, I'm so tied into my land now that like I'm gonna be going to the Bear Fest next year, but I, I'm like, I'm not, I wouldn't call it panic, but I'm such a homebody now. I'm like, yeah. I have my routines. I have my land. I just don't like leaving just sounds crazy to me now. 
That's probably, oh, that's man, probably in the morning. What's that? In the morning, in the morning, everybody's like teasing me because I won't let anybody else milk. And it's like, and then as soon as you leave, you're like, I know he's not milking right. I know he's not doing totally. it right. He's totally. not even singing to him. He's not even singing. Yeah. That it's like I got my it's like I really am just tied in now. It's like my water from my well, like my like kids, my fencing. Like I'm just like, this is this is and it's great. It's like, you know, I've gotten very healthy and uh I'm I've been doing really good streams. Like I'm mentally really crushing because I'm not I'm not just like a bag of trash floating everywhere anymore. I used to be on a plane every yeah. day. But I know that I ha I I should you know I should uh you know leave at some point. But it's just it's good to be tied to the land. I would have been a good slave. I would have been I would have been a good Jeffersonian slave. Like me and Thomas Jefferson, just like picking grapes, talking about grabbers. Like that that's my shit. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I hate leaving the farm, but uh, the the flat Oberfest was fantastic, and I and I wouldn't give awesome. it up. And I and I was just lucky a friend of mine came from south dakota who's also a heathen and stayed stayed at my place for a couple months like a month ahead of time so that way he could get a, a a feel for the farm and that and i have a and i have a farm man that lives here so i was able to actually go out and uh, leave you know and like you said just nervous as hell the whole time start pooping green by like the fourth day from the food off my farm it's like yeah, ah. is the food out there just terrible horrifying dude horrifying. i can't even imagine it's like i was showing people what our thanksgiving was like and it's all from our farm like all of it right like i, I mean like i don't think people understand like my wife like we make our own butter and our own ice cream and our own strawberries and we dehydrate ourselves and like everything like our sourdough from our own like it's all from here like oh, our it's own so egg. hard not to get fat off sourdough and fresh churned butter. Oh, so hard, dude! And it's every time I eat somewhere else, like like I went out to a few dinners here, and they're like nice restaurants or something. I'm I, I'm like disgusted, and I'm I don't know yeah. what's happening to me, but I'm becoming like I wouldn't call it snobbery, but I'm like this isn't actual food. Like this isn't fucking food. Yeah, like, what is this from? Like Honduras? Like what is this? You know, yeah, a hundred percent. It's all just horrifying garbage and preservatives. And like I said, my whole digestive system was just whacked within days of being out in the road. Yeah. Um, and when I went and uh, stayed with Jason and Lindsay, uh, rigid from Crow and stayed at oh, their cool. house for a few days. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, and then you know, then obviously I got some uh regular uh food and uh. Please yeah. go put her on the chain. I think she's chasing animals around and barking at them. Um, <laughs> animal shenanigans. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's horrifying. And I actually just normally, if that hadn't have been such a long trip, like if I'm only gone for a couple of days, I just, I just take the road trips as a fast. I'm, I'm fasting. I'm not oh, eating nothing. Nice. That's cool. That's a good idea. You know? <laughs> yeah, because I can't yeah, imagine and, eating like Mc... Like people eat McDonald's. Doesn't that blow you? Yeah. Mind? I'm like, what it the really fuck? Are you? It's like poison. You know, and like anti-vaccine. Well. Like people that know better. I'm like, dude, you're eating yes. basically vaccines. Like it's trying yes. to get cancer. Yeah. It's crazy. Dude, in our realm. In our realm. That's what gets me. Like you go, you go start hanging out some truth. There's like, we're gonna go to McDonald's. Do you want some? Hell no. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's just like, dude, that shit is it's like you can just feel the death in it. You can just feel like the the evil of it, you know? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And, yeah, and you even that way milk? with that dairy. I mean, you could tell an animal didn't want to give up their milk. Like you get fucking yes. like six cents where you're like, like my my milk, like it'll be like that much cream because they like me. They're like, take my yeah. cream. You know, and you like eat they this. Can hold it. What's that? They can hold it. They hold People their cream. Don't they don't they like can you. hold their cream. Yeah, if they don't like you, they will hold their cream. They're yeah. like, nah, nah. You just get the water, bro. I know. They hold the cream. Because yeah. I had to put like a nose thing in one of my calves to like get her to stop nursing. 
And um, and she's like still holding a fucking grudge. Like they're intelligent animals. And like yes. me and her were such buddies too. And I'm like, come on. You know, I'm like, I give you all kinds of great shit. And she like, they like, especially Jersey cows, they're so intelligent. They like remember you, they remember your smell, they hold grudges. Um, it's pretty funny. Cause I yeah, to put this thing, and that's why it's like all these girls I see with these giant rings, I'm like. That's yes. a little dehumanizing. <laughs> like I put that in a fucking cow to get her to stop like feeding because she was taking yes. all the milk. She was getting become and she was getting big too. I'm giving her all this great hay. I'm like, bitch, like you're taking all my milk. It's pretty funny. My, my Vidar does that dude. And, and I always call him milk face. Cause he's always, he's black. So you can see it on his snot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and I'm like, you little milk thieving little, and, and yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hilarious. I love it. Do you have how many? I, I, have, I, how many animals do you have? Do you have like cows and goats? I know you have yeah. alpaca. I've got uh, four cows. I've got like ten or eleven goats, something like that. Nice, nice. Um, same with the alpacas. Uh, you have any Nigerian just had some dwarfs? Goats. What's that? Nigerian dwarf goats. Do you have any of them? No, no. Mine are uh, mine. Literally, are the exact opposite. They're like the biggest goats I've ever seen. Uh, my <laughs> male goat can reach like nine feet in the air. The dude really? is like a horse. Yeah. Is it hard to keep <laughs> him around? Like, is it hard to keep him where he is? He's just. Oh, it's bare. horrible. <laughs> it, it's horrible. So my, I, we don't, we haven't even had a garden for two years and it's because I've had, I'm almost done with it, but we had to take and dig four by four, 10 foot tall posts, double layer fence. And then, and then also I'm running it to the house cause I've got seven peacocks. And despite, for some reason, there's a, most people think peacocks can't fly. And I mean, yeah, they're not like going to go migrate South or something, yeah. But my peacocks sleep like 50 feet up in the trees. They like, you're about to hear it in a second. The peacocks are about to jump off the house. And That's I awesome. swear they use sound as part of their flying because they scream the whole time. And then they fly up into the trees screaming the whole time. Are the big, <laughs> the big goats give a lot of milk. Like, is it quantity? Pretty good. Way more than you. I've watched your milking. And yeah, it's funny because you're, like, yeah. you're like, squirt, 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 next. Squirt, 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 next. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but they're sweethearts. I mean, those Nigerians are like, they're like dogs. I like love them. Right. They're so, yeah, they're no, like I've got sweet uh, animals. I've got Nubians. Oh, and Nubians. They're all, cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're nice too. They, you know, they're pretty nice. Uh, Ostara, we have. She's locked in back now, but she thinks she's a dog. She's like a house. She's a, she's been a house goat most of her life. Awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got a big dog under me right now. Hey George. Nice. 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 I heard you. I heard you expanded. With what? Uh, Bertaria. That you oh, expanded. Those are, yeah. We, uh, we just bought 33 acres in uh in Missouri, and we're going to get another 150. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Missouri yeah. is so hard not to look at. There's so many good people there. Dude, Chris, you know Christopher Gardner? Yeah, love him. Yeah, he's awesome. He's just, uh, he's living right down the road from that spot. And like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, the laws are awesome. The land is cheap, but like black soil. Uh, tons of animals. It's centrally located. You know, I, I love Missouri and there's so many bears there too, that, um, that, you know, I like to support areas with a lot of good people and, uh, yeah, the laws are just awesome. Same with the zoning laws. Like there's none of them. They're just, yeah. uh, it's just a, a quality state, but it's, it's tough living there. You know, that's why the, the people are good. It's like Afghanistan, you know, it's like, it makes really strong people because, you know, they're, um, a tornado comes through. You got to start over, you know, <laughs> it's pretty fucked up. Oh, tornadoes are the worst. <laughs> yeah. They, the they're frightening thing. Yeah. That's yeah, what domes are for is, though. Uh, like a dome. is in Missouri. Oh yeah. Like uh, Topher. Is yeah. Domes? Like domes are like uh tornado proof. They go right over them. It's like the dome, the dome's where it's at. 
Those yeah. like uh, earth domes, those things are, you, you can go 150 miles an hour. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I, I'm told, I, I totally want to go check his place out. Actually, I was supposed to go. He's one of the people is uh, Chance Garten and Snake Jones and Topher. I was going to go visit in Missouri. And nice. uh, Chance is in Missouri. Uh, that's cool. That's great. Yep. Yep. Chance is in like Missouri that. also. Right, lots of good people. I actually did AIT. Uh, which is your secondary training in the army when you, you know, cause you know, you go to boot camp, which is just, here's how you shoot a gun and run <laughs> like and yeah. do push-ups. You know I mean? Like, uh, you know, but then you go to your secondary schooling and my secondary schooling was in uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Yeah. Well, what do you see going on with the army now and all that stuff? Oh, wow. They are setting us up for a fall. There, there's so hey, many give pieces. Yeah, give me your – what are you seeing in common? So so one of the things you didn't mention with with that Trump did uh, when he made that – where he zeroed it out, he also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not huge on the political thing, right? I'm, I got either. a life. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, he made it so that way the Federal Reserve uh, bankers could own things in the United States. So then the people that are actually printing our money can actually basically gamble on, you know, ownerships of things as they're playing with this entire system. Um, yeah. So they are absolutely I, I think we're basically supposed to be the sacrificial lamb. And it's a real interesting thing to watch then, because then Russia, them dogs are really looking like they're, can you check them? Um then they're setting Russia up as like a moral uh, high ground on yeah. everything. As you yeah. look at Putin's kicked out uh, GMOs, he supposedly kicked out the Rothschilds and turned it back to a state uh, ran banking system. Um, you know, he's fighting uh, against all the bad actors. Uh, we even look at the current events uh Anybody that takes two seconds sees that before any of this aggression that Ukraine uh, uh, tried to join NATO and yeah, that exactly. even, yeah. you know, yeah. And when the Berlin Wall fell, they said even President Biden, who wasn't president then, but was senator, said the only time we would ever see ru aggression out of Russia is if we try to if, if one of the Baltic states tries to join NATO. Well, yeah. the Baltic state tried to join NATO in aggression yeah. totally. you know yeah so it's like no, they're, they're set completely fight. wrong in that fight like that's why the western media is such they just have no credibility anymore it's like they did yeah. everything wrong like they they've been antagonizing and they just keep lying about everything they're doing all these like war crimes and yeah like <laughs> russia is the moral high ground and it's hilarious yeah. to see because they not that long ago they were like the upside down world like America is now where it's like turn, turn know, up in, turn up lines rapes yeah, yeah. You know. everything was inverted you know it's kind of like in oh, America man. now where men are women and, and you know in Russia a car drives you you know it's like yeah. that's America now it's like America is now in that inversion of like everything's actually the opposite and I almost picture it as a natural cycle where things are like. They just keep writing themselves. You know, it's like you go through the inversion, almost like it's winter and then a lot of people die and then you come out of it and the strong ones survive. Because exactly. yeah, what do you see? Do you see, do you see a big population reduction in America coming? Uh, that's the, that's the very interesting thing is the thing that nobody wants to take into account is the true sleeping bear is and always has been the American populace. We are the sleeping bear. I understand China's got a million billion guys. They're all little drones, little automatons. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are we are landowners that are so heavily weaponized. It's not even funny. I served in the army and everybody's like, they use this weird term, military grade, like it's a good thing. There is, like when I was in the army, the M16 I was given misfire, or you know, I, I, I had a jam almost every single clip I ever fired out of that gun. I had two yeah. of them during my test and still, and still shot 79 out of 80 and at 300 yards open site. Like, but 
the the Humvees we were given, like the doors were literally cloth. There was a cloth in a metal frame. Like you could have yeah. shot pencils at us and hit us with the pencils. Like th- there's nothing great about military grade. They don't give us good equipment. They it it around, doesn't have the green tips. Everyone acts like those green tips are like good bullets. I'm like, those aren't even good. Like you no. can get way better bullets. Like you get rounds. Right. Man, yeah. Like green right. tips. So, like, so they like do a little hole in you, but you know, there's, that's like nine it's millimeters a great right round now. Like now, you know, it's like everyone's obsessed with the 45 or any of these big, big rounds. But it's like there's nine millimeters now and you can get more rounds in your magazine. And those fuckers expand like this big. Like they put holes in people. It's like. It's, and the and military. A 45, like, a 45 goes like 50 feet and then drops off like whoop. Yeah, like <laughs> nine, millimeters. nine millimeters are sweet. With the right yeah. bullet, with the right rounds. I mean, if you have just shit, you know, army rounds, it'll just put little holes in you. But if you have like, there's like the technology of bullets now have changed the whole game for all weaponry. 100%. And all the people in America own those special rounds. This, you yeah. pull up on any given farm, that farmer's got like two 30 out sixes with. The one's got just his practice rounds, but the other one, that's got the high grade. That'll go through steel, you know? Like, yeah. the, the, he's got, like, four shotguns out there. And this one, I only shoot the dragon's breath out of. I like igniting fires with it, you know? Like, yeah. you know, every farmer and his son has 23 guns. They know where every little hole on their own land is. You know, little hidey spot where their animals lie down. All those things. We are the sleeping bear. You cannot, the whole reason the United States has not been invaded and try anybody's tried to take over. Yeah. Yeah. It it can't happen. Including from our own government. Especially the size of it. It's like there's no way to do an invasion. Or you could invade cities, and I'm sure that'll happen on some level, or you can invade America with immorality in Walmart, which has happened. Like, you know, fentanyl, Walmart, fucking sodomy um like that that was an invasion mm-hmm. but but there's no way to launch a military invasion on america it's like just tactically it's not so so many people don't even understand tactics or logistics or any of that there's no possible way you know you might mm-hmm. be able to you know it's it's just not even possible and yeah everyone's armed and we have like we can shrink our supply chains and any war of attrition yeah china is not a threat at all except for economically yeah. Just because they're they can they can make all the cheap shit and that's it. It's addiction and dependency and comfort is how America has been conquered lately. But the, there's a lot of people, that are, but a lot of people have rejected comfort, like me and you, like guys like us. And it's like there's millions of guys that do that, and those guys are are not gonna go down with that ship. You know, I was like a Hollywood fancy guy. Now I'm fucking milking animals in the freezing in like zero degree weather. It's like. There, there's a lot of people that have accepted that lifestyle and those people are not going to be uh, subverted, you know? A- absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's the banks the thing. are going to go down too. the banks. The banking industry is getting so fucking dumb and their, their means of control, you know, like the Kardashians and show like, it's not work. Maybe I'm just, I just hang out with really good people. Maybe it does work on retards, but like, the, the, those people are just so docile and broken already that like it doesn't even matter. Like you can just give them like yeah. a like a little laser, like their cats, and have them chase it around. Give them vaccines, you know. But I just I don't know. What do you what do you see coming in the next couple of years? It, it it really it seems like they're setting us up. In my opinion, they've been setting up. They want to overall control and they want it at this point they want it to be crazy right-wing religious so they almost had that with trump i think they tested the waters with trump and i think where they're going to finish it is maybe with like santorum um but they tested the waters they're like not quite there and then they put in bumbling fumbling biden and i mean just tank the economy uh interesting enough 
Biden and the Democrats don't issue any checks while still dicking with everybody over COVID, which now, you know, they're just kind of trying to sweep under the rug, but everybody noticed it anyways. So it's like, there's a real hatred that's developing toward the left wing and toward alternative. Uh, one of the dogs going after one of the goats here. Um, toward the left wing and alternative type people. And I think that they're going to keep pushing that in a very bad way purposely. So that way they can flip the switch and, and they can pull on the jack boot and put the jack boot on everybody's throats. Everybody's going to be like, yes, we love the jack boots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause I can see the LGBT and our, our best buddies, the Jays, like they are being set up for a big fall. Like, yeah. And they don't even see it. Like so many of them don't even see it. It's like they're building resentment, building resentment, building resentment to a point where they'll flip the switch and shit's going to get gnarly, you know? And I'm not into it. That's why I'm like trying to get people off the victim tit where it's like, you don't have to watch their pornos or take their pills. It's your choice, you know? So don't blame yeah. them, you know, because that's going to go to a bad place. You know, I'm like, there's a pride parade. Don't join the wrath parade because that's the next parade. You know, you're going to you're going to go down the sins where it's like right now they're pride. So it's like, you know, look at me. I suck dicks. I wear my panties or whatever. And so they're going to the next parade is going to be jackboots and you're exactly. going to feel euphoric killing them. But what are you actually killing? You know, it's actually like a black mirror situation where you're doing it to yourself. It's kind of like these yeah. sodomites where it's like are you really doing it to your daddy? Like he does, he's dead. You know, you're doing it to yourself, but you're hurting your own body. You know, like a lot of these people are like, look at me now. I'm, it's like, no, no one's looking at you. You're just hurting yourself. It's the same with the wrath that's going to come where it's like, oh, we have to kill. But I still, I think they're almost losing that too, though. It's like, I don't know. I don't, a lot of people are not going to go with that. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Because the Christian movement has lost all its power because they lost so much truth. You know, they're they're like they seem like they're lying all the time. And so, like, without truth, you don't have any you don't have any power. And without power, you can't really do a jackboots. He's got to have order. I keep telling people, I'm like, order isn't coming. It's not like like they're gonna kick in your door with their polished boots and shit. I'm like, you're looking at people, you're looking at collapse. You know, like people aren't going to yeah. know how to fucking fix a, a pipe. You know, I, I can see cities drowning in their own shit. You know, like there's without competent men, like the, the next generation of men are like. Well, Francisco you know, like, already is. Yeah, they, they, they're they not competent. And the fiat system isn't going to be able to pull in migrants anymore. Like the dollar isn't going to be as, as powerful. So you're not going to get competent Guatemalans. It's just going to be all these fucked up panda bear people where they're just like, I eat bamboo, you know? And I don't know, man. It's like, yeah, I think they want to flip it right wing religious, but like these religious people, these Christian, you know, mega cuck, Ziocon bullshit. It's like, they don't seem like they have any balls. They're just like broken, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're very, what very accepting. Like what's like, Ben like Shapiro? Very yeah, yeah. They're like, they're, there's no difference between them and and the Church of Satan. It's like, so do as thou wilt. You're already saved. Give money to the demons in Israel. Like, you know, wear a mask, take vaccines, never admit you're wrong. Like, what are you? You don't even have gardens. You know, you see all these like giant glyphosate lawns. I'm like, you're not even growing food for your people. Like, you're you're dead. They're like dead tribes. You know, these, these like Joel Osteen types, it's like, where's your fucking animals? Where's your milk? Where's your honey? You got nothing, you know? And that's why it's like, I think there's going to be some warlords and shit coming down the pipe. <laughs> and I hope it's 100%. not archaic. I hope it's not archaics because he's going to do some raping. Yeah. that That's just, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's... I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist, but you know what, you know, as a man, when you see a child or a woman hurting and in fear and in pain, that is, I'm not even one of these today's, I don't believe in like a, 
uh, chivalry and I don't believe in like the captain save a whole society that we have now. We're like, I don't need to save my wife from a puddle. She knows how to deal with the mud puddle. We go wandering through them all day, picking up shit. You yeah, know, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Like yeah. she can open a door. Now, don't get me wrong. If I'm in front of her and we're walking together, of course I do, but I'm not like going to go run around, you know, and she can't go through the door, you know, like get the I'm fuck the out way. of here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the screaming goat caught my attention and now I forgot where I was going. What the hell I was saying? Oh, just about, <laughs> um, about, uh, uh, seeing a woman or a child in pain. Yeah. So, so when a woman or a child's in pain, that is one of the times that absolutely, I don't even care whose child it is, or I don't even care what woman it is. You see somebody assaulting a, that, a woman like that. I am kicking that dude in the side of the head as many times as I can until he's just twitching. Like where it's just how that goes woman? down. Where did he get this woman from? Do you know more details about this? Uh, I looked up his, it, it's very open. Uh, you can look up his prison record and it has his picture and everything. And it, it includes, uh, it includes, like I said, that uh, uh, he had kidnapped her. Uh, they had dropped a number of those things. I think he did 27 years, if I recall correctly. Um, and that there was a kidnapping and uh, uh, it was, it was violent charge. And then they dropped, you know, just like they do when they, when people go to court, they charge you up with 12 things and then drop them. And so that way you'll plead guilty and uh, do things like that. Uh, <clears throat> so, but yeah, it was, it was all bad Has his picture. So it's not like you can mistake it. Cause obviously um, you can have the same name. My uh, Brian here, he went to go look up this attorney or uh, went to go look up uh, a death in Florida and like in the last year, 80 some people with the exact same name in Florida have died. How do you have 86 yeah. people with the same name in Florida? That's insane. No, I heard him talk about it. I heard him talk about prison. And I was like, because at first I was listening to the guy like, oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. And he like talked about prison. I'm like, well, what did you go to prison for, pal? You know, was it tax evasion? Because no problem there. Was it possession? No problem there. Was it when happened yeah. to be rape, would it? You know, and it was, it was like, he's a registered sex offender. And so why do you think all these truthers are like, cause I've had several people write to me, like, you got to listen to this a bunch. guy. I'm like, no, I fucking don't. You know, and then they say, oh, judge not lest you be judged. I'm like, then judge me. I'm not a rapist. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll judge the fuck Go out ahead. of you. Judge yeah. me. I don't care. It doesn't yeah. bother me. I, there, there's there's moral lines that we don't cross. And I've been to prison. And, and I've been open about that. I went to prison for cannabis. And guess what? In prison, they hid those dudes in special little areas because even in prison where we were the worst people in the world, we despised those ones. Yeah. Those ones were the ones that got like beat up. That is got a Problem. Like no one's mad at cannabis felons. No. Like nobody alive. Well, I'm sure some like fucking retards are, but like I I there's zero moral reaction to me from people that have served time for cannabis. Like zero. But like rape? Like, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's how so and people are legitimately basing their worldview on this guy's shit. And then they're like, Oh, well, well, you're not perfect. I'm like, D so, you, so I'm you're not. just, yeah, I know. But like, it's sex crimes or, you know, it's just the truth or movement can be so fucking stupid, you know, and so inefficient. It's like, so you guys it's just went on and on for three years about child sex trafficking and Q and, you know, where's Tom Hanks and all this bullshit. And, and these same people are like, Actively listening and emotionally connecting to a convicted rapist. You know, like he did his yeah. time. Like he still is. He should be dead. Like he should be yeah. in a box. And in the prison itself, that's what would happen if they didn't yeah. protect dudes like that. Dudes like that will go to protective areas because the dudes that aren't like that will not put up with sex offenders. Sex offenders are for beating up and taking their stuff until they cry and check themselves in. That's the only thing that they're good for. 
Like, holy cow. And actually, so I went to check it. So when I started getting uh, a hit up quite a bit was about three, four months ago, because he was talking about like Ragnarok and whatnot. Only his Ragnarok like thing is some imagined nonsense that he just like imagined up during the 27 years he sat in prison dreaming about raping girls and stuff and whatever else he did. And that guy's actually he had about 20,000 subs. And uh, so I started checking him out. And that's when I found out this other part, you know, and uh, he's up to 75,000 almost right now. And like right now, he's got like uh, way more people watching him right now, like because he's live right now. Funny enough. But yeah, he's he's. Yeah, he, he's just growing by like just vast leaps and bounds. And I can understand where the, the simulation thing has a draw. And it's because uh, people are starting to crack the understanding of the universe. But there is an objective reality where there's rules and ways things work. And we're kind of getting down to the root of that, some people. And so it makes things start... Uh, uh, looking very simulation like because like they're like little kids like you know oh if i do this this happens oh see it's a simulation no you have just found the rules yeah, you have just gotten you know, in a simulation she said yes you know yeah. it's like, guys don't want accountability they're like oh it's all a video game it's a simulation there's an evil thing making me do all this stuff i'm like nah man you're a fucking rapist and it's like I think dudes like that are pushed by the beast, like the system, because they're so evil. Like, right. I don't think growth is organic. I don't think that many people want to listen to some, you know, autistic sounding guy be like, oh, you know, oh, oh, you know, oh, Saturn X came in and oh, there was a canopy and oh. I'm like, okay, it's kind of interesting, but there's no way you're like wildly mass liked. Unless the system yeah. wants us to listen to a demon that fucking raped a girl, you know, because they yeah, want it, people it, to be nihilistic. It. They want simulation theory because then they, they, they're, they're like more nihilistic, more easy to control. And they want people to have to morally justify having a rapist guru because then they can't question their governor or their sheriff, you know, because if yeah. you, if, because it, that, it's like a ultra slave breaking. It's like, Okay, so if you listen to this guy and you defend this guy, you're not going to fucking have any moral balls to go against the sheriff, you know, or whatever. And that's what people do. Yeah. It's fascinating, dude. It's like, it's just slave breaking. And I guarantee people are going to comment about, oh, oh, who's Owen to judge? Not a rapist, you know? Yeah. Believe me, my wife wants it. Owen's wife looks super happy. I've seen it. Like, right. yeah. even when I was you a hedonist, even when I was like really into just banging, it was always because they wanted me. Like, there's a fundamental problem with getting a boner from screaming and crying. Like, that dude shouldn't be around. Like, if someone's no. like, "Oh no, who are you?" If that, if you can, if you can even get a boner in that situation, you should be dead. Yeah, like it's not 100%. a sexually arousing situation. And then you you tie them and you scare them and you fuck them. It's like, and these guys are allowed on YouTube, but I'm not allowed on YouTube. It's just like whatever, it's fine. Oh, dude, and, and growing by leaps and bounds, hundred percent. He did the exact opposite reaction of what a real man yeah. does when a woman is in fear and pain. He did the exact opposite reaction. He went over and caused it more and took advantage of it where any dude would have kicked that dude would have would have immediately went, what's causing this? You know, like, like a pit bull, you know, all of a sudden, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to kick his ass. Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> dude, Thanks. I got a funny story. One time I was hammered trying to defend some chick, but I was like, I'm, I, it was like, I was, uh, all right. So this guy was yelling at this chick at a bar and he was like, Stacy, you fucking bitch. And I'm just like sitting there drink, like just drinking. And I was like, I, I just didn't want to hear it anymore. I thought the guy was being a, a punk. So I was like, but I, I worded it so badly that they both ended up very confused and kind of, I don't know. I wouldn't say they turned on me, but neither one was happy. I was like, I was like, you don't talk to that bitch like that. And they both look at me like, what the fuck? Cause I was just repeating what he was saying. Cause he was like, you bitch. And I was like, don't talk to the bitch like that. You fucking talk to me. 
And the chick's like, did you just call me a bitch? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know your name. I, I... <laughs> and I just, you know what? You stopped the fight. Now they aren't fighting with each other no more. Both, they both kind of teamed up against me. They're like, what? what? And I'm like, you don't talk to that bitch like that. You talk to me like that. And they both were just like, dude, you're, no, what? <laughs> and, they, and they just made up. And they were just like, fine. I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> I guess I'm the bad guy. And so that was, uh, that was, that was a funny story, kind of. Oh, that's hilarious. And, and, you know, that's okay with if you're, you know, the, the fact is, is the thing you wanted to happen happened. And so what? They disliked you for it. You weren't doing it to be somebody's friend. You right. know? I, was, I didn't realize how I thought I was like defending her, but I was like wildly insulting her. It's like just some strange guys calling her like a bitch. And I'm like, because in my head, I'm like, that's, that's her name. Like I was just hammered. Oh, shit. That is fantastic. So, so <clears throat> what exactly do you see is coming with the way things are folding down? Dude, I don't, it just seems like it's going faster and faster. It's kind of like when a, a weed, it's like a weed taking over a, a weed taking over a pond. I was telling, I was telling somebody this. I'm like, if it takes 40 days for a weed to take over a pond and every day it doubles at what day is it half there? And most people don't realize it's day 39. So it's like slow, 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 bang, bang, bang. Right. You know, it's like, it feels like birth pains. You know, it's just like contractions and they're faster and better. And now it's like, okay, so the white supremacist movement right now is a black rapper, a gay guy, and a Mexican. What? You know, and so when you're dealing with this lack of, this lack of like meaning or coherence, you know, and especially with the amount of debt, the amount of like fake money and just moral decay, I can just see shit going south like quick. But, you know, in, in, in smaller communities, I can see life getting better. I think that these dragons are sitting on all these resources and like really parasitically eating from people that a lot of people that are probably scared shouldn't even be scared because it's like... Uh, you know, your life may actually improve with like the collapse of these fucking people. But like, I just, yeah. I mean, the amount of knowledge, so, like the fact that a lot of the Jays can't hide behind victim consciousness anymore and be like, oh, well, we had this event 80 years ago. Like no one cares anymore. I don't know anybody that like weeps for that event. It's like, no one cares. They're like, shut up. It's almost like a, a girl that keeps justifying like getting hammered every day because she was molested 20 years ago. You know, you're just like, <laughs> stop, you know, <laughs> you're like, we, we can move on. I don't it know. Ruined my life. <laughs> yeah. So I just see drinking good too, lady. <laughs> yeah. It's like clown world just going to keep dancing. And I don't know. I, I don't see it being very like, I don't know if it, if it rhymes from last if it rhymes from last uh, century, I mean, Spanish flu was COVID. A lot of people died from the vaccine. People started waking up. You know, World War I was Iraq, and people started asking questions about, like, who funded it and why. And then these voices are going to come up in the 20s, a financial collapse, you know, like the Great Depression, then a massive consolidation, you know, bring in digital currency and, you know, biometric data shit and, you know, there'll be two worlds living side by side. I don't know. I mean, I can see a lot of so many similarities between, you know, you have the fake <laughs> war, you know, the, the deception, World War I or Iraq, where it's based on a terrorist attack that was fake. You know, shoot the Archduke Ferdinand versus 9-11. And then, and then it rolls in. And then people start waking up in the 20s. And they're like, start naming the grabbers. Uh, there's like this big movement to like get better. You know, the Germans weren't just wrong. I mean, there was a lot in the 20s and 30s they were doing that was really cool. There was like a, a mass awakening in Germany. And then it starts getting hijacked and derailed by like a small group of gay guys. Uh, you know, I, 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 I could just see a lot of the same things happening, you know. Small group of gay guys on meth. You ever seen that video of Hitler on meth? Just like. Nobody's like, super like fruity. I mean. He was a childless 
meth vegetarian guy and he was always surrounded by like super fruity guys and you know when you look at his mannerisms he's like very fruity and so but You're those right. are but those are a lot of times the guys that can and i'm not saying that churchill and fdr were good i'd actually say they were probably more evil because they were trying to bring in a central bank and but but it but you know hitler wasn't the good guy it's like a lot of people are in this yeah. false binary that like since since you know uh what's his name churchill and fdr were obviously such crooks and were like doing such horrible genocides and stuff that hitler must have been good but he wasn't he like he took a, a mass awakening in germany they're getting rid of like the Weimar system and the Frankfurt school. And they're trying to like get back to family. And it's like what Trump did. Like when people compare Trump to Hitler, it's actually more accurate than people want to admit. He like paced them. He made them feel like he was one of them. He was like very, you know, uh, uh, flamboyant. He could hold a crowd. And then he started gambling and he started, I'm not even talking about like Holocaust stuff. I'm talking about like invading Russia, invading all these places. Like, um, you know, really getting a lot of Germans killed, breaking down cultural stuff. Uh, I think that that inner core, we're all like gay. You know, I think that the, a lot of those guys were like super, yeah. like homo -y. And so, yeah, I see a lot of that now. I, I see it's a very similar thing. It's just like the same shit repeating. But, you know, I don't think it has to affect anyone. I think it's, I think we're in a free will realm. And so if you want to be part of the show, you can be part of the show. And if not, you don't have to. If you want to goose step around with a bunch of gay guys, you know, that's going to be presented to you in the not so distant future. <laughs> but I think the um, the proud LGBT is is moments away from complete destruction. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the thing that bothers me about it is there are so many uh, uh people that are just nor just homosexual and they don't want nothing to do with that. And those people are going to get drugged down with the ship that weren't yeah, trying everybody. to do all yeah. these weird things. And they're going to get drugged down with the ship. And I'm all fine with like, you know, like uh, the other day they had that. Uh, I don't know how to, I don't know what the name of that company, some fancy company uh, for clothing and they had the little girl, uh, sit, you know, ad where she's holding the bondage bear and they have like the thing in the back where yeah. they're trying to pass a law where you can have sex with little kids, you know, and uh, <clears throat> it's just a a absolutely infuriating. I'm not sure why. Or just go walk that... into Target. Like Target has a right. whole free child section with rainbows everywhere. You know, there it's, it's but... gone. And so people are getting mad. And so I know yeah. what you're saying about the, uh, but I tell the same thing to my, to these J's, you know, a lot of J's listen to me and I'm like, but don't cash in on the victim consciousness. Cause you're going to have to pay it back. Yeah. Like I know a lot of these um, more normal gay type people that I, I root for, but it's like, stop pretending yeah. you're married. Like you're not married. Like that's a lie. You know, you can be civilly unioned, but like marriage is about family creation. Sorry, I'm not against you or anything, but you right. did redefine it in 2008. Before 2008, it had a definition in the dictionary. Now you can make your own definition and say when two women love each other very much and co-own a Subaru and loved a knickknack, we call it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're not going to call it marriage because it isn't. And so these are the little strings that get them hooked in because they're not like pedophiles you know i know like lesbian couples and stuff that are like i would trust around like i would have dinner with them and they're nice and all this but if you're gonna play those games if you're gonna cash in on victim consciousness where you're gonna pretend that that you're a victim and you deserve free shit and everyone's out to get you so when yeah. you have bad behavior it's because you're a victim because you're part of this marginalized group and you're actually married and you're not they're not married it's like, and that's not me being a bigot. It's like, I had to create Beritaria because I knew I could only control something that I named. If you don't name it, you yeah. don't control it. So it's like, Beritaria was something I created. So now no one has a claim on me. If two women want to like make a statement. Oh, shit. What's that? Did you hear James True the other day say that he created the Beritaria? 
No, I that's... shit you not. He said that the other day because I was getting a whole bunch of things, and our James True's mad talking shit about you right now. And I flicked it on because we weren't doing anything. And he's like, and when and and he claimed creating Bertaria the other day. I'm like, wow, oh, dude. He's, he's mentally like really sick. That guy. Yeah. Hundred percent, he is. And the only reason he's talking shit is because Rose from Crow like jumped in my chat and was like, "I should have listened to you about James. Like he just fucked everyone over. He stole all this money. He's acting insane. He's trying to get people to do trauma rituals." I'm like, "Yeah, no, he's like a bad guy. He's like legitimately a bad person." You know, I'm not judging his soul. You know, I don't know his deep intentions or, but like. The guy's bad news, man. And so when, whenever a gamma male like James True gets called out publicly, the secret king, you know, the, um, he'll go on a ramp. But he never say any of it to my face. That's the whole thing. It's right. like in person, he would be a, as docile as a lamb in front of me. But uh, on the Internet, he's this this king, the secret king that, that you know, to claim he created Bear Tire is like, uh, I mean, that's just so dumb. It's like, yeah, it's like saying I gave birth to his owl or something. It's like, what? <laughs> you know, like he lives alone with an owl and he like thinks he's Lucifer. Some girl showed up on his front yard with some steak she'd marinated and he called the police. Like that's a threat to him. So I don't know that what really to say. Happened? Rose asked, yeah, that really happened. Rose like, what would you have done? I said, well, I don't eat meat, but had she showed up with like, you know, like some broccoli chowder i would have eaten some broccoli chowder i don't know what do you want what do you want me to are say you, here like an 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 the time to bring me some food is like, he like an anarchist or something he's calling the police on people uh, like you know is he's a walking yeah. paradox he's like he's like well the the united states is a is a slave state uh he always ends everything with a question like he's a valley girl what my name's jane true because when you end everything with a question, you're never accountable for what you say. I started Bertaria. I started Bertaria. It's like, is that a question, you fucking manipulative freak? You know, it's like, so he's going to talk about how he can only function like like Confederate longhouses. But yeah, he's going to call the police because a girl is terrorizing him with marinade. It's yeah, like with marinated bro, steaks. It's like, bro, you're not you're not functioning properly, you know, and so. The fact he still has access to the internet, like these people are just like fucked up, man. Well, what, what other shits yeah. he said about me? Let me guess. I'm actually the gay one, the guy with the four kids. He used to no, call you me. You and I are just getting like you and I are just getting like splashes. He's mostly on Crow and and Rose specifically. He's 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 piss hammering with Rose. And then you and I are just getting like side shots because he also took some side shots at me because I I screwed him over at his last thing when he tried to turn, when he tried to do a Luciferian ceremony at my place. And I'm like, no, that will never happen. Has and, he ever you know, had I'm a not, successful event? Like, has he ever done anything successfully? You know, there's a lot of talk about building dragons. I, I don't really know. And I think he did one with like a boy's home where they built dragons. And he's been trying to do something bigger since. The thing that he did at my place, what really was going on was he was in this huge hissy fight with uh, Andy Kaufman over uh, that girl, that, over this girl. And uh, they were fighting with each other over it. Well, his way of winning the fight, because Andy Kaufman busted out his racing Porsche. So, Jason, so uh, uh, James True was going to build some dragons I don't, in an Ewok village. Like, I don't fucking know, dude. Yeah, that's <laughs> People are crazy, bro. Yeah, he bust out the owl. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's like, we're going to do a trauma ritual. I'm going to bury you to your neck. And then the it's going to be a gift from Ball. And everyone's like, dude, why do you talk like a fucking valley girl from 1985? It's like, I started Vertaria. It was my idea. Like, what? <laughs> like, those people, because the problem with lying and self-deception is like, you don't know what the truth is after a while. Like in his mind, he might actually think that's real and that him and his owl fly around after everyone goes to sleep and he sprinkles fairy dust in everyone's hair and, you know, just gone. 
you know? And so the fact that he has access to the internet is one reason why society's so wacky now, you know, cause jam, jams, yeah. Charles, what, so what was he saying about me? I mean, what, what are some of the claim, other claims he made? I like to know this. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear any others, just that he started Bertari. And that, of course, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know, just irritating listening. He's like, yeah. And, and, and so when, when me and the other guys, and he wasn't even actually saying it like derogatorily toward you. Like he was saying it like this was just matter of fact. Like, like when I started Bertaria, like, I'm like, really? But I can only give him like 10 minutes. And then it was like, yeah, I would rather go out and get kicked in the face by a goat or something. Here's how little him. his reach is anymore. No one even told me that. Like nobody listens to him. You know, I think a lot of YouTube is bots. I think when they're trying to drum up somebody, yeah. they just like they make it look like people are listening, but no one's listening to that guy. Like, not one person has said to me that James True made a claim that he started Bertaria. Like, that's no one listens to the guy. You know, he might have like three girls marinating steaks listening to him or something, but it's just like <laughs> who are very threatening. <laughs> And who the hell gets that mad at Rose? Like, Rose is such a sweet girl. Like, how is that even possible to be like, oh, Rose? Dude, I'm telling you, so, man, there's, there's some, like, bad energy. Him and Archaics probably have a lot in common, if you know what I mean. Like, they seem I, like they I, have I like absolutely do. Yeah. There's, like, yeah, energy it, there that's, like, that. every now and then people just flip out on, like, a sweet girl. And I'm not white knighting. Like, I know some women can be pains in the asses i get it but rose it's like like sweet rose from crow you know just to get that mad and try to humiliate her and stuff it's like dude are you rapey yeah <laughs> you like to yeah. see women in pain, and, 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 and why is it that a girl who's showing a uh, uh, uh interest in you enough interest to make you food like she even took the time to marinate the steaks and stuff like that like somebody a woman who's genuinely showing interest call the cops you know like that's kind of a weird thing to me bro why is that a offensive thing for you or you know and how'd you very know where you live? did they like hook up before and i, I picture james looking at his owl like don't worry i'll handle this <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking stupid owl i do have to bounce here sue though like amy keeps hitting me up that i got dinner waiting for me That's oh sweet. yeah you can't can't be get making the wife mad well i absolutely appreciate it brother and uh this yeah, is great to talk to yeah Dude, we, gotta, we gotta come out and then do a stream and just talk shit about the rapey guys in the truth movement <laughs> Oh man, that you know what? I don't normally do any kind of drama, but I feel just fine with this because I don't want the rapey guys in the. It's not drama. Movie. It's like, like a civic yeah. duty. It's like a civic duty. Yeah. It's like think about how many people are listening to this fucking guy and they don't realize he tied up a woman and banged her. Like that's yeah. that was a simulation to her. <laughs> yeah, and that's one reason why I talk so vulgarly. Like sometimes people are like, "Why do you have to say it like that?" I'm like. Because if I say sexual misconduct, you don't get the picture. He tied up a woman and banged her with his dick. And it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. You know, that's why there's all this, like, soft language. That's why I'm like, sodomy. <laughs> you know, because people are like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a rainbow unicorn. And I'm like, no, you do sodomy and your anus is wrecked. And they're just like, dude, that's really aggressive. I'm like. Hey, man, you're the one who has to wear a diaper at fucking 35, you know? <laughs> and then James True like, um, I invented the diaper, me and my owl named Mr. Fitz. Dude, <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> Did you think he named himself James True? You think that's Dude, real I part? asked him that when I met him before we ever had any issues, and he said it was. He said that's just legitimately his name, which seems... I don't buy it. The thing about liars, yeah. it's like you never can, like them talking doesn't mean anything. You know, like once yeah. you establish someone's a liar, you're like, yeah, but I have to figure it out myself though because you're a liar. Can I see your ID, please? He's like, my ID? It's with my owl? <laughs> we started Bertario? Oh my exactly. God. Exactly. Well, the other one I catch that nobody else does uh, is, okay, so when you're a veteran, 
you know, it's not a code. It weirds me out when all these people talk about like a cult, like they've hidden everything, like it's a code. It's like if you work in that field, you have certain little lingos and things and things yeah. you do that happen. It's just mechanics do it, doctors do it. So in the army, if you're in the army, the first thing that you ask another veteran or somebody in the army is, what's your MOS? Mine was 62 Bravo. You know, I went to AIT in Fort Leonard. Well, like these are these are normal things. You're trying to figure out how you uh, uh, relate to this person. You know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is a normal. Thing. Be like, what's your what's your home club? You know, like where right. do you work yeah. out at? Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just and and this is what you ask. James True never mentions any of that when he found out I'm a veteran. Any like almost anybody else that's an actual veteran that they ask me that question. Oh, what's your MOS? What's your MOS? Like, and he never said that. He says he entered at the same rank that he left, which isn't really saying anything at all. That's a really weird statement. And then doesn't ask me his MOS. So, like, were you like some kind of a special contractor? Like, I I don't probably I don't like understand. Janitor. He's probably like a janitor. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Like he's trying to be, I don't think he was in the military. Right. That well, guy, that's why I'm saying. I, I, I question that jump. because he doesn't ever at, do that thing that the other veterans do. No. So is he even a veteran? No, I do. There's no, I mean, the guy claims to start Bertaria. Like what? He stole money from uh, Rose. Like, no, there's no way he's a fucking veteran. Like that guy can't do a push up without like crying and thinking about his owl. You know? He looks like a sack of potatoes. And then he wanted Crow like to walk down like... St. Arnold and get in a sarcophagus. You thought Crow was going to do that? Have you talked to the man? Like, he thought Crow was going to do one of his trauma rituals. Yeah, that everybody was going to go do this little ritual and that all the people that were coming were going to do it. And Crow's like, I'm not having any part of that. Are you fucking nuts? You know, I'm sure he didn't swear. Crow don't, you know, he's much more proper than I, but he's proper. That's the point. The dude, you know, like I, I'll do some crazy crap. I would never imagine Crow doing it. I wouldn't do that crap. Like, That's so are bad you asking people for an ID, it shows. You know, because like I was going through a phase of like, oh, straw man, citizen. Like I'm like, but I still had to like make sure everyone was of age because there was alcohol. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I got to ask ID from people. Dude, to do a ritual? Like, imagine being like, listen, if you're going to come see me do stand-up, we have to do a bloodletting. You have to bow to Venus. You have to let me circumcise your cock. You know, it's just like, no, dude. I guarantee he wants to snip dicks, too. You know he does. Yes, with the teeth. With the teeth. Yeah, he's like, dude, we have to, we have to give our gifts to Ball. Oh my God. What a, I can't believe I used to listen to that guy. Like there was a time when I was like, this guy's cool, man. He's got some good gravy. And then it's just yep. like the lying. You just start hearing it slowly where it's like, you know, prune my lips. I'll lie this stream. It's like, okay, it's over now. What was the lie? It's like, oh, you're just a liar. You're, you're trying to relieve yourself of your karmic blowback by getting everyone to agree that it's okay. You're a liar. Like I, I see that now, you know, he's like, you, you got to wonder life. if you got to wonder if it, for him, lips is a code for people in the chat, because every like back when, back when we were actually talking and this whole thing went down the, the chats I'd watch and he would say that anybody that argued with anything he said and tried to prune his lips, they got axed. They were immediately gone. Yeah, so it's like, was lips like code for the people in the chat that were going to tell the truth and argue with him and whatnot? Yeah, he actually probably like, wants a cult. Like, he wants a cult. Yeah. Well, his, his new thing, I think, is supposed to be like Spaceship Earth. I think it went from Dojo Earth to Spaceship Earth. or He's rebranding. Yellow Submarine, or <laughs> I, I don't fucking know. Like, I, I don't keep track of it. Like I said, I got... Rose got a hold of me and told me the stuff, and then ever and then a bunch of other people like he's talking crap about you right now. And I'm like, why? I don't even talk to the guy. I don't care about him. Two years. I know I haven't brought him up in old. years. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just like, but Rose was like, listen, this is what just happened. She's in my chat. 
She's like, I just want to come have some laughs with you guys. So I played the uh, the music video that we made about James True. Like my boy Anchor Bear made this hilarious rap. Oh, that rap? Yeah. Where he's like, oh, I live. In, he's like, I live alone with an owl, so throw in the towel. He's like, dude, it's so fucking funny. And I guarantee it just infuriates James True because like little demon fuckers like him, mockery drives them insane. Like if you yeah. don't take them seriously and do the rituals, they like go nuts. They're like, it's like the thing. There's like there's like a di- little demon that emerges. Like after he had that thing when uh, you know, Kaufman fucking took his chick very easily. Yeah. Uh, he started like texting me like nuts shit. He was like going nuts. Like his ego had been like poked. He was like, and I'm like, bro, chill. Like we're cool. And by the end, I'm like, you fucking suck, man. Like, you're, yeah. like, not a good guy. Like, you're, like, a cruel, mean, like, creepy, fucking pervy little freak. Yeah. I honestly thought part of why you uh, had it out was because without even asking you, because I was sitting there when he made the decision, he, when he decided he was going to – his his way of uh, competing for the, for the girl that he fought with Kaufman about was going to be uh, uh, throwing this, ri- this festival – and you were going to be the headliner on Saturday. And he just straight, and he said, and even actually said it on a, on a show or two. And I'm like, dude, you didn't even ask Owen. You didn't ask me. You didn't ask Owen. Like I, I yeah. never, which don't get me wrong. You're welcome on my property at any time, brother. But the, but a festival with you headlining, I couldn't even capacity that. Like I'm, you know, yeah, 500 and of course he didn't ask me. The- He's like, yeah, dude, what a mess. Anyway, it has been a great time. Thanks for having me. All right, we got to do it again soon. We won't Let's wait here again. All right, peace, so, brother. Thanks for coming, brother. Love you, yeah, man. Of course. And everybody else, Ben is my peacock daddy and Owen is the bear target, dude. <laughs> oh, Chaney. We love you, Chaney. Um, thank you, guys, everybody, for coming. Uh, we're uh, – so we're uh, working on whether I'm either going to move the stream to uh, uh, Tuesdays or to Wednesdays probably and record for the next week on Thursdays, which nobody else really knows that part. But uh, just because of the way things are panning out and uh, did can everybody hear the goat screaming in the background the whole time right there like that? Holy smoke, he's loud today. Um but uh, we're gonna so, but we're gonna get back on the regular schedule next week and be back on. Um, that this was absolutely fantastic. But uh, like Owen said, getting away from that farm is super hard. And then when you get back, it's like, uh, yes, uh, yes, Bernie, we absolutely need to get together. We actually even already have the episode. Like I thought, uh, Jared uh, already emailed you. Um, but yeah. Uh, Bernie and I are going to get together and oh man, he's it, the, what he's getting ready to lay down and what he's going to show is going to be absolutely amazing guys. Go check out uh, Bernie, the crypto alchemist, uh, check his channel out, check out Karen B. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, already doing the flat, uh, flat over fest for uh, uh, West coast next year. Finally, the West coast gets to represent. So we're, uh, we're starting to work on it already, guys. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And I'm getting a real computer, so my uh, presentation next year is going to be so absolutely insane. Uh, I don't even know what to say. But uh, we've got a lot of really good people coming up. Um, we're going to get El- Emily Moyer. We talked about her coming on. Um, it's absolutely going to be great. I, I appreciate everybody for coming. Uh, I love all you guys. Um, and then uh, here uh, around Christmas time, we're going to do a big fan appreciation thing. And uh, I-, I figured out what I'm going to do for the uh, uh, people that helped get me to Flattoberfest this year. Uh, you guys are all absolutely amazing. And uh, I-, I-, I just love all you guys. And uh, uh, can't wait to see you next week. So now we got to go with the. Uh, no Jared, so I always have to. There we go. Oh, and and uh, some new stuff. Everybody, go check out Freddie Badger. Uh, good time, people. Uh, check out. He put out an LP, and uh, on Bandcamp. 
and uh, go to Bertaria. Check out Bertaria. Those guys are doing the most amazing things. And obviously, Owen. Uh, Bearplegic Coffee, 410-708-7622. The absolute best coffee you can put in your butt. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, love all you guys. And enjoy some Freddie Badger. Once I stood at the foot of a great high mountain that I wanted so much to climb. Top of this mountain was a beautiful fountain, and beside it the tree of life. I fell down on my knees at the foot of this mountain, cried out, Odin, what must I do? I want to climb up and see, want to learn from this tree that grows so clear in my view. Then I heard a great voice from the top of this mountain saying, child, these are my roots. Start with Fehu and climb on upward between the etheric and root. Started climbing upward, taking Odin's advice. And the higher I got, the harder I climbed. I 
play cards in England And I play cards in Spain I'll bet you ten dollars I'll beat you this game She'll tell you 